Faber, we'll get a list of all the attendees after, correct? Yeah, you will. All right, we got 60 attendees. Saber's estimate to have 60 attendees was pretty, pretty accurate. He's good with numbers. 62. All right, let's uh, let's start. Are we live? All right, that's great. Uh, thanks everyone for joining this this uh, webinar hosted by uh, Hostaway. This marks the half year anniversary of our monthly webinars. And this one is a special one because we want to dedicate it to our uh, partners that we have here. We got ICMD, Fine Rentals and House Day. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today is what's going on in the, in the market today, but more importantly, how uh, property managers can diversify their income streams and become less dependent on major OTAs. Uh, let me start off by a quote from, um, from Airbnb's uh, Brian Chesky from last Friday. He said, we think there's going to be a travel rebound coming that's unlike anything we've ever seen. And um, I can confirm from our numbers that, um, that that rebound is already taking place, which is fantastic to see because uh, the last 12 months have been quite the roller coaster ride. Uh, just to give you give, give an example here, I saw that the vacation rental occupancy rates for summer in the US are currently at 60%. And you can compare that to 59% back in 2019. But what's worth keeping in mind is that a lot of people haven't even booked their summers yet because summer isn't here. So we're going to see probably the highest ever occupancy rate for vacation rentals in the US. Um, and I've even heard for some of our property managers that it's uh, even even low seasons are getting booked now, which is uh, which is incredible to see. But um, I also wanted to mention that we we have here among the attendees. Whoa, that's a lot. Uh, this is one of the biggest webinars we've ever had. Uh, among the attendees, I know there's there are many out there who have empty calendars right now, and you're wondering when it's coming back. Um, I just wanted to say, don't worry, it will be back soon. Um, no matter where you are, uh, people are going to be traveling the moment they can. Uh, travel will look different. Um, for those of you who happen to be in the short-term rentals and vacation rental industries, it's going to look very good for you. Now, uh, to all the all the attendees, uh, we promised you an open Q and A. Uh, we're not going to censor anything, so uh, you have a Q and A function here on Zoom. You can type your questions there. If they happen to be answered during the the webinar, we'll mark them as answered. But you can always add more questions. And after we're ready with uh, with the uh, fireside chat, we're gonna we're gonna go to the Q and A. Now. Let me start by introducing uh, introducing our dear panelists today. We're actually in the process of launching the Hostaway Marketplace, and we've got three fantastic companies here. And we're going to talk about how to reduce dependency on the large OTAs. And I'm going to hand the mic over to our three partners, ICMD, Fine Rentals, and House Stay, who are all integrated with Hostaway. So if you're already a Hostaway customer, you can start using them today. I'll hand it over to Paul from ICND. Thank you, thank you, Marcus. So um, ICND is a, a web development company and uh, it's also a marketing company. So we've got two different arms, but um, the web development side, uh, like like Marcus said, we integrate with uh, with Hostaway and, and other PMS platforms that um, we, we build websites just specifically for the vacation rental niche. Uh, that, uh, that industry that um, uh, we also do some real estate as well. Uh, so these these websites uh, that we that we build are uh, packed with um you know conversion focused elements on them, uh, 
items to get more bookings direct rather than the OTAs. So, um, you know, we, we, we build in these custom tools and things that really make the, uh, the websites shine. Um, and again, the other, the other side of the, that coin though, is the, is the marketing side. Um, I'm the digital marketing director for, for ICND and, uh, we, we work on SEO, pay-per-click, social media, and email for our clients. Uh, so that comes in, uh, you know, all different shapes and sizes, depending on where you're at and where you need to be. Um, but between those two, those two sides of the company, uh, that's how we, we really strive just specifically for the vacation rental niche. And, um, we, uh, just like Marcus said, um, the numbers are, are astronomically large this year. Um, we are, we are seeing huge increases, um, both through our websites, direct bookings, and, uh, even through OTAs as well. But, um, with, uh, with that being said, I'll, I'll pass it on now to, uh, to find rentals. Thank you, Paul and, and Marcus. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Steve Nuninghoff. I'm with uh, Fine Rentals. Um, joined here with uh, Cindy Dolan, who's also uh, part of Fine Rentals. Um, we're actually, a, we're a marketing company too. We're a direct booking channel uh, directory that leverages our um, close to 19 years domain authority uh, with Google and other search engines to drive um, uh, the brands of the various uh, vacation rental managers, which we have about 350 hosted on our site. Um, and we, we use it to drive the brand so that we can actually um, transverse travelers to book directly from our site on through and into um, your software. In this case here, um, if you're a, a host away client, you would go directly into uh, your website and onto their software to book. Um, Cindy, do you have something to add to that? Sure, I just want to say thank you to Marcus and Hostaway for having us today. Um, we're excited to be a part of this group that's here today and look at the opportunities that are available to all of the property managers out there to increase their direct booking and their return on revenue. So thank you for your time today. And we'll hand it over to Jared at Hostay. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, my name is Jared Grupka. I'm the co-founder and CEO of House Day. Uh, we're an online booking platform for stays specifically 30 nights or longer. Um, so essentially, it's a fully automated process with tenant background checks, lease signing, uh, and real-time ID verification, um, all for our stays longer than 30 nights. Uh, we handle specifically entire homes and accommodations, no spared rooms or shared apartments. Um, and yeah, happy, happy to be on this call with everybody else. Marcus, I'll throw it back to you. All right, well, a brief introduction about uh, Hostaway to those of you who are not familiar. Uh, we're uh, the leading vacation rental software in the industry. We're a PMS and channel manager integrated into one. And we also have a marketplace that we're launching soon with 70 integrated software partners, including ICND, Fine Rentals, and, and Housestay. Now, uh, there's a couple of trends that we, we brought up in, in previous webinars. For example, families are traveling a lot more together. Uh, they're booking longer stays than before, uh, longer lead times as well, working from home and um, renting especially bigger homes, bigger places, more private. But that's not why we, we threw together this webinar today. Uh, there was one trend that was very consistent that we saw in our data. Um, and that's why we wanted to get this group of experts on the topic here. Well, what we've seen is that the number of direct bookings, whether they're done by property managers' own websites, whether they come from phone, email, or, or uh, any other means, they have been consistently getting stronger and stronger, which means that the shares of overall bookings from uh, major OTAs is, uh, is becoming smaller. Um, and for, for some people in the industry, this has been a, been a dream for, for many years. But my first question to the panelists here is, what, what is causing this trend? Why are people booking uh, directly with property managers these days compared to two years ago when they mostly went through the big OTAs? I'll take that one first. <laughs> uh, really, it's it's going to be uh, 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 two different factors, I would say. And 
we are in a weird year, uh, obviously. Now, now demand is up. Demand is up so much that really people are booking everywhere. So it's not just direct bookings that are up. It's uh, bookings on these OTAs as well as a, kind of as a whole. But uh, like you said, though, the, the good news is that we are seeing more and more direct. And I really can attribute that to the, the property managers and doing the whole book direct campaign. Uh, Going, going above and beyond, you know, the more, the more that the um, OTAs, um, I don't want to say take away uh, guest information, but uh, the, the more that them, that information is restricted, it kind of drives the, uh, the property managers a bit more, right, uh, to actually t take, take their bookings back, take their customers back, in a, in a sense. Um, so with, uh, with by adding, um, you know, putting guest books inside uh, the houses and asking for email addresses whenever um, somebody somebody signs in or contact information whenever somebody checks in, um, trying to trying to get that guest back, quote unquote. Um, you know, obviously there's been measures put in place and stuff like that to kind of thwart those efforts, but. Uh, I think between guest education and guests learning the uh, the additional fees from Airbnb and and Verbo and well all all of them really um, learning those fees and kind of adapting the guests adapting and and learning how to actually book direct and why it's important why it's more important. All right, Jared, what what, how, what do you see from? From your point of view, yeah, uh, on our end, um, we have a lot of property managers, um, you know, channel managers, and other folks who who kind of like that. And especially since we deal with specifically thirty nights or longer, uh, it's different than you know the typical uh, booking through an OTA um, where it's you know less than thirty nights. So since we have the leasing process and the background process. Uh, what we're seeing is we've kind of automated it and making that paperless for people's back offices. So um, we see folks who kind of want that um, security, if you will, for books for two to three months, because uh, the uncertainty that comes with that, uh, with real-time background checks and ID verification, we kind of do all of the vetting, uh, take that cost upon ourselves from the, uh, so the hosts or the tenants aren't charged fees and kind of that's part of our package to kind of uh, provide that, that secure booking for, you know, three months, a year, for, for however long, uh, especially for those longer durations of time, um, kind of as we see that trend uh, continue. All right, Stephen and uh, Cindy, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I can throw one. I'm actually um, backing up what Paul had said. I mean, our our business it has been, you know, has a couple different um, uh, components, and, and and the really important one is is that we're out there advertising to the traveler why it's important to book directly um, and and have that open communications with the with the property manager. So. That's helping in the, you know, I would think in, in the bump up in demand um, for direct bookings today. Also, you know, we're in a drive to market right now, or we were, uh, that's changing. And, and because of the drive to market, people are more familiar with the areas that they're gonna go to. And so it's easier, easier to find those local brands. Um, so that's, I'm just reiterating what, what Paul had said. Yeah, I fully agree. Agree with you there, uh, Steve. The, the consumer behavior has has changed a lot, especially when it comes to travel compared to, to previous years. For example, someone who used to do business trips, go for a week somewhere, uh, book a, book a hotel on an OTA, they now are doing very different kind of travel, and also the locations they might be used to flying somewhere, and they're not doing it this year. Uh, means that they might be looking back and seeing what well, where did we go 10 years ago we rented us a nice cottage why don't we go there again and then they try to find out who is who's managing it and i think in it, when when things are changing it's always uncertain and having someone you know like a trusted property manager to rely back on is something that can uh, can give a significant edge to booking directly with property managers so um, then the next question here is, well, the, the OTAs, they have a massive marketing budget and a lot of property managers may not feel that it's really worth it to try to compete with that. So um, how, how can a property manager actually compete with that? Have you seen any success cases where property managers are able to drive direct traffic or, or get more, more direct bookings? I'll take that one. Um, 
I have seen in many cases um, that property managers are starting to take better control of their descriptions for their properties and their own site, um, keeping the most important and the best information that SEO drives up um, to their own site and putting on the property management software a different version of um, descriptions. That can really help. The other big one is we have um, a huge audience looking at every option right now and they're driving they're looking to find a closer venue just like we talked about now and i think that's because of what's happened with covid people feel comfortable with something more local so there's a benefit there they're looking for the property managers they're trying to find the closest most direct um, version so if they've got the information and they're coming up anywhere on the top page they may be able to beat those ads that are being paid for financially Yeah, it's a really good point, Cindy. The um, the it's it's interesting too. I mean, I've seen I've seen markets be saturated with um both organic and pay per click results depending on the market. You know, so uh, that that mentality of oh geez, how do I compete with this? How do I how do I put money in and expect money to come out? And it kind of scares a lot of property managers. But I mean every single one of the pay-per-click campaigns that we run, um, we compete in a market for, for, for our, our clients. And um, we, we have a good ROI. And the reason we have an ROI is because the way that you have to manage the campaigns and manage them well, um, you, you know, Verbo and Airbnb, they're gonna have more search impression share, which basically means that their ad is gonna come up more. That's all there is to it, it will. But Google will still spend your money it will still show your ad when it thinks it should be shown and you will still get conversions from that. Now, if you put in, if you want to compete in your market with a $50,000 budget, sure, it'll, it'll be great. But if you have 500, you can still get an ROI from that. It's just a matter of how you manage the ads and set them up um, for success. Um, and backing exactly what you said, Cindy, with um, the SEO portion of it too, is uh, at those, uh, I've seen a lot of markets, the SEO side is, um, is the winner, you know, people, uh, there's been studies done that people skip ads, um, they just completely don't want anything Google throws at them, which also means that they skip the map, they skip um, oh, the uh, rich snippets up at the top, they go right to the organic results, because they trust those the most. So if you can get in that, and you know, a, and a lot of markets don't have OTA saturation yet in the organic, that's, that's a win right there. All right, uh, Jared, do you have uh, anything to add here? Yeah, um, you know, Paul and Cindy pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Um, and then, the, you know, the, the one thing I would recommend, if possible, uh, is to do, you know, do the research to make sure that you're ranking for, you know, certain things and certain terms that are actually applicable. Um, you don't need to rank for, you know, the buzzwords, uh, you know, just because, you know, it may have a thousand searches. You know, if it's 50 searches, but it's very targeted uh, and can results in conversions, ranking high organically for those ones uh, is very beneficial. And it could be, you know, uh, different keywords as long term instead of vacation rental uh, and um, other things like that. But uh, I'd say, yeah, they hit the nail on the head, but it's, it's important to do your own research and make sure um, essentially you're kind of capitalizing on, on the low hanging fruit, so to speak. Thanks. That's uh, that brings us to an uh, interesting topic. Uh, do your own research. For a property manager who's starting out right now and, and trying to figure this out, what would be a good starting point for, for finding out what are the keywords that they could use to attract visitors? Do you have any, any examples you, you'd like to share? There's certain tools that you can use. Um, the only caveat is all the good tools you do have to pay for. <laughs> um, but there are, um, we, we do this as well, like one off site audits and one off uh, research for, for clients. Um, so if you just need some guidance, then, you know, reach out to an agency like ours, that'll, that'll help you look at, at, at specific keywords and their volumes. Um, now I'm going to jump on what, what Jared just said, and you don't have to worry about the big keywords and go after those if you're not in the position to do that. Like if, if you are on the second page, then yeah, you can go after the giant mega keywords. But really, um, here's an interesting interesting side note. Like um, if you have uh, specific 
air, uh, specific areas, specific towns, uh, or specific homes that have pools or elevators or pet friendly, build pages dedicated to those and, and put content on them, put your rentals on those. Um, those are easier to rank for than the mega keywords. It's just simple as that. Um, whenever you can, whenever you can do that, uh, that's when you, uh, you pick that the, the right ones to go after and build that content around. And that's how you, how you get ranked for, um, for finding those keywords. Um, just a specific example, and then I'll, then I'll shut up. Uh, the, I, I was blown away the other day about some research that I was doing um, for large group rentals. And I, I was looking at the volumes, right? And large, uh, large vacation home rentals was the, the biggest, most searched for term. But three below that was this long term of um, uh, large beachfront vacation homes that sleep 30 or more. And then two below that was that same thing that sleep 20 or more. So those two terms were had just as much volume as the mega term at the top. So that long query was done on the cell phone. And I bet you anything, if you build a page dedicated to that and you really try to get that, um, get that traffic, then you're going to have a win there. So looking at the right keywords, although they might not be the big wigs, sometimes it's the keywords that aren't the big wigs that you're going to have better conversions on because you have content surrounding that. And that's what people are after. Amazing examples. Absolutely. Yeah. And piggybacking off of, oh, sorry, go for it, Cindy. No, you go ahead, Jared. I uh, just wanted to piggyback off of what, what Paul said. Um, you know, a, a lot of these property managers uh, also kind of don't have the technical resources uh, to kind of rank for some of these things uh, or generate content. And, and it's a lot easier than a lot of people might think. Um, blogs are incredibly helpful where you can write, you know, a couple of blog articles about, you know, stays of 30 nights or longer um, to kind of generate those, that content that Google looks for. So, um, you know, use your knowledge or your network to kind of create that content uh, on a blog or something like that that points us back to your site. Uh, and, and those things all feed back into organic results as well. I just wanted to mention um, what the property managers have that is a gold mine that the rest of us don't. You don't need to be super techie to understand what keywords you should be looking for because it's different in every market. When you answer that phone and when a guest asks you questions, those are the same things that they're going to do a voice search on their cell phone or their computer. So keep track of what your guests are asking you about and those are the key terms that you wanna try to work for and you don't have to go into any big work up on the Google Analytics or anything like that. You have the most, the best and most current information. So you wanna focus on those things. Yeah, one, one thing that I could add to, to what was said is also that uh, a lot of uh, property managers, you have properties that are in specific locations that may not be that popular overall. So they might be overseen by the big OTAs. Let's say if you have have a property in a neighborhood in a city, the OTA has massive traffic for that city, but you might be the only one who advertises in that neighborhood. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a neighborhood. It can be even nearby uh, a certain uh, tourist spot that may not even be nationally recognized, but it's something that the locals know about. So they might search for something near this park. And that's something, that's a keyword that big OTAs is just too small for them to even grab on. But for you, if you have properties there, that's a, that's a major benefit. Um, what are some of the quick wins that property managers can do right now? Because as the calendars are, are filling up, um, I'm sure we're going to see a, a slower season at some point as well. W what are some of the main things you've seen that uh, property managers have been able to do to generate uh, revenues right now? I talk to a lot of clients every day. And one of the things that I've seen is adding on sites similar to the group, the panel that's here today, um, making sure their website's great. That's something they can really benefit from. Um, being on a site like um, House Stay um, and Find Rentals. Find Rentals is a subscription-based site. Um, being in more places that help bring things directly to them where they stay in control of their properties are great ways. The other thing is social media is always a great must. Talk about what you're doing. 
pop on three times a day, assign somebody to the task. It doesn't have to be big. You can say the sun is shining and it's 72. It's um, quick and easy, but keep that interaction going and it'll keep um, people watching for you. Although in parts of the US, we're starting to see where the rebound has already happened dramatically. I live in Minnesota, which most people don't think of a place that they would visit, especially in the winter months. Um, we're still having some snow here now. But I had a client up in a town called Duluth, Minnesota, which most people have never heard of. They had 50 some properties. Um, after the first opening of COVID, they ran to 111 they were able to get a hold of, and they are at 98% occupancy during times when they would have nobody there. Keep keep your brand out there. Every place that need every place you think that you should be is a place you should be. Watch your Google Analytics and make sure what you're doing is working. But um, some very easy ways to get on and out there to show your brand. about uh, Paul, Jared, anything to add? Yeah, I didn't want to cut off Jared just in case he was going to jump in. Um, uh, just a real piggyback on that one for um, Google My Business is a is a really is a free tool. Uh, it's easy to use. Um, and this is where you, you drive up your uh, your reviews, right? So if a company if if somebody is seeking out and wanting to stay with you, now they're going to research your company, not just the unit. They're not going to just look on on the OTA for the the unit. They're going to try to find information about who is renting this thing, right? So when they Google your name, they want to see reviews. And if you can get a good presence on Google My Business and get reviews on your Google My Business, again, it's all free. Um, you can send out emails after stay. Um, there's even ways to create direct links straight to for um, putting putting stars on Google. Uh, it's a great and easy way to um, to really uh, boost your presence on there. And go in there, up, update as many pictures as you can, put videos on there, um, you know, feed the feed the Google beast, as, as we say, um, put as much stuff as you can, and uh, make sure it's filled out. And I, many of you may not know, but there's also um, updates that you can put on Google My Business, just like you can a Facebook wall or, or Twitter feed or anything like that. So um, just more stuff to handle. Yes, of course, but uh, also um, stuff that, that will pay off for you. Absolutely. And then lastly, kind of not SEO or anything related, um, but, you know, just kind of having, you know, a contact number that folks will actually answer the phone and email address that are prompt responses. Um, you know, the simple customer service things, if you can respond to somebody within an hour now, you know, they can go anywhere and kind of book anything almost real time. So the more, uh, you know, kind of open you are to your customers to answer their calls and answer their simple questions, uh, you'd be surprised at how easy it is to convert a phone call into a booking request or, or a converted booking um, simply by just picking up the phone because some of the large OTAs, it's, it's impossible to get somebody on the phone. So that, that human touch uh, can also be very helpful and also very easy, uh, very simple solution to put in. Yeah, I forgot who recently did a study, but they, they actually contacted um, a, a, a slew, like 100 different property managers, maybe 50, um, called them and only maybe 30% actually answered the phone. So it's it's like, yeah, that that conversion rate is huge if you can get somebody on the phones at, a, at the appropriate time. Good call. Absolutely. All right, sounds good. I think uh, we could take in uh, a few questions I'm, I'm checking the the q a panel here all the time uh but there's there's one actually uh related to this topic from from sarah uh she's got guests who are coming and looking at their own site and also on on verbo and even though they communicate directly the guest ends up booking on on verbo so the question is what can property managers do to to incentivize uh the guests to uh, to book directly with the property manager. Sometimes it's not about what you can do the very first time. Um, it's about what you can do to ensure that property managers are always getting the second book booking. Some 50% of bookings are people that have been to your facility or your town or your area before. Make sure that your home has simple little things that invite them back to book with you directly um, on the back of, on the front of the refrigerator door saying, you know, book direct with ABC property manager for the best rates. Um, 
concierge services available, a book that sits on every coffee table and every nightstand in the home. So that will help you long term. You'll at least never see um, a booking come through an OTA with uh, some of those expenses that are attached to that. Um, and then in the front end is to be looking at advertising in places that allow you to stay in control. So you're always the booker. Um, taking advantage of all the things we've already discussed, getting your brand bump out there um, and including um, advertising and uh, social media. So all of those things can benefit that. Absolutely. I'd also say, um, you know, some people you just can't overcome that uncertainty for, you know, they're comfortable with booking with a large company because they've heard of Airbnb or VRBO or booking.com. So that first one, as Cindy said, um, you know, you might not get the first one, but you can definitely ensure if it's a good stay and quality stay that you'll be able to do it the second time. And I would say just your process, right? So uh, for short-term rentals, it's a little bit easier. There's not as much paperwork. Um, for longer term, for 30 nights or longer, um, some of the you know vacation rental companies and property managers don't have processes in place to sign leases and kind of automate that process. So uh, by default, it's just a little bit easier. They, the, the guests will prefer booking through um, an automated process that an assistant that has it. So uh, if you have the technology, the ability to kind of just make it the booking as seamless as possible and as um, not as confusing as possible, um, just because folks tend to get confused and, and other things when kind of not going through one of the, the main channels that they've had, you know, their niece or nephew or somebody book through where they can kind of guide them through that process. Um, and also having very clear and concise documentation. Um, and obviously a, a nice looking website. If somebody goes on and they're going to be spending a few thousand dollars, if it goes on and it doesn't look like a very, you know, uh, tip top, you know, website, uh, that'll be a little bit hesitant, which kind of drives them to the OTAs. So um, yeah, just kind of, you know, doing what you can and uh, just making the guests feel comfortable, as Cindy said, I think is a big one. Yeah, there's always that, um, that misconception, I think, that uh, o OTAs are, are quote unquote against us, but it's it's not really the case. Is like you utilize them. You know, they're they're the lead source. They're your generator. They're your traffic. They're your they're you you pay for this service, right? Um, it's a necessary evil, but use that and then let your your own brand kick in afterwards. You know, try to get your brand in their in their minds just as much as the Verbo brand or or Airbnb brand or, or whatever. Just tr that that's that's the name of the game, right? Um, you know, it's it is it is a service we use, and we all have to use it, right? For for right now, um, I know way back when 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 uh, Home Away was Home Away and VRBO was VRBO, and there was no Airbnb. Um, Cindy smiling because she knows <laughs> exactly what I'm about to say. Um, but everything was a subscription or a, a pay per uh, year service, right? You pay $149 a year and you get X number of leads. There was a silver package and a gold package and platinum, and um, there, there, it wasn't as as advanced as it was now. But um, think back to that mentality, but way back when of when you are paying for this service and the service is providing for you. Um, try to get, try to, after the fact, get the leads back, just like, just like Cindy said for next year. Yeah. And Paul, Cindy and I were speaking this morning about, you know, we, we talked about how bookings are, are, are quite up in certain regions. And um, we get sometimes the, the comment that, you know, I'm all booked up for the summer. And we say, that's great. It's a great opportunity right now for you to, um, block out slots in your calendar from the OTA so that you can then be in position to take in a direct booking uh, and preserve more margin. And at the end of the day, people buy from people. Um, and that's what the brand is all about. Excellent. Uh, so then the following question is, uh, what? What can property managers actually? Sorry, let me add to that uh, that question because we've helped uh, hundreds of. Pro I've actually personally helped hundreds of uh, property managers over the years with this. There's, I think, the idea of getting direct bookings is a more active approach. If you if you go out and you put a property on an OTA, it's going to be a passive approach. It means they do the work and you wait for the results, and the results will be you get bookings. Um, and where, where I see a lot of property managers fail or give up is they try, they set up a website, they, they advertise it to the guests, and then they don't get any bookings. Because that's exactly, well, that's probably what's going to happen. And the reason why that's happening is you need to actually keep it going. You need to actively promote it because it's not going to be passive. 
if if that same traveler is plan is uh, planning a trip to a different location, you don't have the properties there. In order to get those people to book with you again, you have to actively reach out. I think social media is great here. Just send them an email and post on social media something fun that's going on in your region so that you can get, well, instill the idea that they should actually travel to wherever your properties are right now. Because if they have already made up their mind about where they're going, then they're going to go to an OTA. But if you can get them to actually book exactly where you have the properties, then you're guaranteed that they're not going to look around for options. They're going to come back to you because they know who you are. Um, so keep keep going at it. It's a it's it's a long term project. It's not something that's uh, that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take a few years to build up that uh, customer base. But um, now let's talk about the the branding of property managers. Now, as we mentioned a few few times here, you build up your brand. What is it? Well, what is building a brand for a property manager? What can a property manager do to stand out and, and what goes into it and what benefits does it bring? I know of a few um, property managers that are not reliant on OTAs whatsoever. They maybe have 2% of their inventory on OTAs. And, and those are the brands that have they've they've been through the motions right they've they've been around for years and and just like you said this is a long term plan um to, to really really be at to be independent you know and you've got to have the the staff in place and and a marketing team and in house and dedicated people to dedicated things um you know a, a lot of property managers that we deal with um it, it's tough right it's tough to grow it's tough to hire a person specifically for x or specifically for why, because you've got a lot of different hats on and you're trying to juggle that. And, you know, you're, you're going to have to get to that cusp and start looking at as start looking at it as an investment rather than an expense. And sure, maybe hiring that person, um, you may be um, in the hole for a while. But, you know, once you can get all the all your items in place and and get your get start working on your brand your brand recognition your retention your guest retention um getting just getting your name out there i think is is the the hardest part right and getting it out there with positivity like i said with reviews and with good feedback and all that stuff that's uh that's even harder so um it, it does require a person to uh, to manage that that isn't um encumbered with uh you know helping out guests find uh find their room keys or, or whatever you, else you have to do um so th that's kind of my 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 take is you know you have to make the plunge to to really try to promote your brand before you can even promote your brand <laughs> i can add to that a little um there are many sites out there um including find rentals that does not block your brand or block block your property names being in places like your local chamber of commerce, being a member of the VRMA, um, those memberships are inexpensive and they're a great way to show your credibility. Um, chamber of commerce is a great way. Um, any type of um, service that your community or state has that promotes tourism, they usually have memberships as well. They're very inexpensive. It's a great way to physically brand your uh, company and using um, companies that work in the old version of banners and profiles about branding the property manager itself are great. Make sure not to be afraid to toot your own horn. Who you are and what you can do is this is where you speak loudly. Don't be afraid to mention that. Um, Sarah asked a real uh, question just a little while ago in the Q&A and she said, you know, do I post three posts a day, um, both for my real estate and for my vacation rentals? If they're put together, just keep the conversation going and make sure that you're doing it. That's branding. Make sure your Facebook page shows your brand and represents everything that you are. Don't be afraid to be yourself and tell everybody how great you are and what a beautiful area you have to vacation in. 
Absolutely. And to kind of cap off what Paul and Cindy said, uh, you know, it might take a couple hours a day and it's not going to happen overnight, but, you know, simply keeping your users engaged, LinkedIn, Facebook, blog posts, these kind of things over time will add up, uh, make you show up on organic results and also build your brand so people kind of know what you're about. And, and don't be afraid to use other platforms and booking channels. Um, you know, say if you focus on strictly short term rentals or, or other things, look around, see what's out there. Um, like, you know, uh, especially in down seasons, uh, you know, you can put your plan or platform or brand out there to, to kind of pivot a little bit, if you will, or often attract a wider audience, if you will. So, you know, you're, you're focused on nightly. Uh, maybe in the long term, you can kind of focus on, you know, bookings for 30 or 30 nights or longer that kind of focus on, hey, you know, we typically don't do long term stuff, but in the off term months, yeah, we could get somebody in there for three months and help increase occupancy. And at the same time, you kind of get your, your brand out there, if you will, for different types of markets, right? So not just short term rentals or weekly rentals. Uh, you can kind of build your brand in each segment uh, and kind of just build your clientele base um, from the ground up and even attract kind of new clients that you might not know that are they're interested in your kind of property. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, where we have about five minutes, four minutes left now until we, we start with the, the Q&A. Thanks for everyone who's posting questions. Keep uh, posting them. Uh, I'll try to take them in if they fit the, the current conversation. And the final question or final topic that we're going to talk about is, uh, is again, related to, to building brand and also getting direct bookings. Um, in order to get any any of that done, you need to you need to choose a target audience. You can't just say I want travelers to come here because travelers are very very different. They can have pets, they can have families, they can they can have uh, mobility needs. They might uh, be coming for different reasons. And um, yeah, my my question here is: What are the target audiences that are available, and how do you determine? who they are and how do you target them and then how do you attract specific target markets very broad question it's a, it's not an easy topic but it's something that everyone who starts a starts a brand or starts any kind of advertising they need to think about who are they trying to reach so what advice would you have to property managers who are trying to figure that out right now um i would i would just say don't limit yourself to the demographics that you think you might be attracting uh, there's, there's a whole world of people out there that are looking for, for pro your property and you don't even know it. You know, it's not just people who are going on vacation. It's not just travel nurses or digital nomads or, or remote workers, right? It, it can be anybody. Uh, and now in today's day and age, people want to see the exact photos and, and kind of see exactly what they're getting before they book it. Um, so just keep your, keep your mind open and, and kind of don't put yourself in a box, if you will. Uh, there's, you know, billions of people out there looking for housing for different reasons. Uh, vacation rentals fit the mold for pretty much any type of that because it's that turnkey housing, move-in ready, you can work from there. Um, there. There's all different types of demographics that you can attract. So uh, my biggest thing would just be don't kind of put yourself in a box and limit yourself to, you know, maybe short-term rentals or, you know, travel nurses or a specific demographic. Uh, there, there's tons of people out there who want to book your property. If it's high quality, I guarantee you there's somebody out there who wants to book it. Well said. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Especially this year. Um, <clears throat> with, uh, with that ability to target and with the tools that we have, you know, uh, well, Facebook has a targeting feature that you can serve ads to people who are in travel and tent groups. Uh, you can also look in your Google Analytics and you can see that the people that are visiting your website are cooking enthusiasts. Uh, you can see that they are usually between the ages of X and Y. And there's all this demographic information. But the thing is, is like all of it is a bell curve, right? Everything, everybody doesn't necessarily fit in, fit into a bucket. Um, but the the if you do need to maximize your budgets and really try to figure out the best way to target people and what audiences to go after, um, you do have to look at items like that, that you can really hone in on um, geographic areas, uh, most definitely, uh, when you can uh, develop content and do pay per click surrounding, um, you know, the, the, the people that book the most. Uh, and then, like I said, those travel intent audiences, the uh, interest audiences, stuff like that um, will get you that, that the good ROI, you know, the better ROI. But, you know, you don't have to you don't have to go that far if you if you uh, especially this year, um, because we do have a, a bigger range. Um, Kim Wilson in, in the in the chat just asked a question of have we noticed a shift in renters and their ages this year? Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it used to be a, a much um, 
uh, older demographic. And this year, we've our clients have kind of said that, yeah, it's been been shifting a bit younger. And um, I can attribute that to uh, just the, the way that, um, you know, the, the with COVID and people being the older generations are being a little more weary to, uh, to travel and, and, you know, the younger ones are getting out and um, with the, uh, the extra income and everything that they still have the jobs, they're still working remote and stuff like that, they're able to get get out more. So um, they're able to, to spend more money and, and go, go where the, the older demographics used to. Um, so I think you're kind of spot on with that one there, Kim. To add to that, I had a client in Alabama. Um, they experienced severe storms on top of COVID. And so we all know to get products to repair homes is almost impossible. So we came up with an idea in order for her to figure out who her ideal customer was for her very limited number of homes. We thought about maybe partnering with somebody in a same and similar, so beach-oriented, golf-oriented area, and I lined her up with a couple of different places. So we lined up with somebody on the Oregon coast and somebody in Florida who also experienced storms and different issues throughout the year. And we talked about them figuring out their ideal customer together and using each other as a feeding referral source so that it goes still directly to the property manager. And she has had great success and built great relationships with two other coastal um, locations. Um, so don't forget that all the property managers are on the same team. You may not wanna partner with your next door neighbor, um, but to look at same and similar type of um, draws to your market can really help you outline your ideal customer and help you in situations where maybe there's a, a restriction in your area or storm damage or something of that nature. Hey, Cindy, did they, um, did they use backlinks between the two um, property brands? They, at this point, they're doing it a very personal way. So it's phone calls, referring, um, getting on that phone, working together. They're feeling that out. It's a little scary, I think, at first, if you refer a booking to another property manager. But somebody that really wants to go to Florida, Florida's capable, they're going to Florida. If somebody really wants to go to Oregon, they're really going to Oregon. Um, these are just, have you ever considered this option? And if we grow as a whole as an industry, it's still a good thing. So they're not using backlinks as of yet, but I could see that working in the future. Yeah, well, I think I could I could add an example from a property manager who actually was successful in building a, a very strong brand. They had, uh, I think, 80 or 90% of the, the people who booked with them, they were families who wanted to go on a beach holiday. And the challenge they had was that their their brand name even had, I think, beach and rentals in it. Uh, they couldn't expand their business because in the area where they were located, there weren't enough beach rentals to go, go around. And uh, they were looking to expand their brand. Um, keep in mind when you start building a brand and defining your target audience, while you can change it, it's still a long-term project. It's something that will take you years. So when you're planning it, when it's just at the planning stage, Try to make sure that you don't end up in a situation where you actually become the market leader, but the market is too small. So try to make sure that you can actually expand, uh, assuming you're going to be successful, that you have a path forward. So make the, make the dreams big enough, because if you have a small dream and it becomes true, it might be a bit difficult to, to expand after that. So um, those were all the questions from us. Now we're going to uh, take all the questions from our our uh, audience here. I saw a very interesting question here that I, I actually myself don't even know the answer to. So Kim uh, said that they actually specialize in larger properties. Great for you, Kim. Um, but they only capture one email of the guests from any reservation, which is, of course, if you book a place from for 16 people, you're not, probably not going to have, uh, have everyone from the same household making the same booking. How would you go capturing the contact details and the emails from, from all of those? Uh, yeah, so I can at least speak to kind of how we, we do that on, on house day since uh, we're kind of signing leases and other things. So we need to have everybody who's going to be staying in, in the home 18 or older. Uh, if you have the ability to uh, on your site, um, you know, you can define the number of, of guests or tenants, if you will, um, but you can also cash out additional, additional information uh, either before the booking is confirmed or after the booking is confirmed. Simply just, you know, have 
because uh, usually whoever's booking the home is going to know everybody who's staying in there uh, so they can, you know, provide their name and email address or for whoever they want contacted. So simply by just kind of allowing those fields or forms in there while you capture that booking uh, gives you that information to keep everybody kind of updated on that booking, especially throughout the status of the booking as well, whether, you know, the request was just sent or accepted or confirmed, uh, kind of everybody's on the same page, which also usually tends to kind of speed up uh, confirming that booking. Otherwise, uh, the folks will usually have to call themselves or email, you know, themselves back between each other uh, offline. Um, if you can kind of do it all in one place on the platform, uh, at least on a house, that's kind of how we seem to streamline that process to get around it to kind of convert more quickly. Yep, I could also say we have on our, our marketplace, I think at least five integrated partners that uh, that have software for check-in or guest experience. Uh, they all they all do that. So you are required to enter everyone who's uh, who's staying and they, they can gather the, the emails for remarketing later on. Um, quick add to that, Marcus. Um, people continue to think that email marketing is the best. Um, if we achieve a two to ten percent open rate, um, we are excited. Um, one of the best places that you can keep on promoting to everybody is um, ask your primary booker if they want to um, share the home that they're going to stay in. A lot of people love to brag about what they're doing and where they're going. And they can link directly the photos from your Facebook page if you have each of your properties on there. When that happens, you'll see that many of the other people that are staying in the home will do the same. And I've seen great success from this. So don't forget that email is still a way. It's kind of getting a little old fashioned. How we want to do things is immediate. It's kind of the reason, uh, example is many people don't read a newspaper anymore they look online for immediate information. And that's the same way that you can promote to other guests that are maybe staying this time, but maybe wanna be the original booker next time. All right. Then uh, there was a question here about a shift in the age of renters. Kim asked, uh, said that most of the renters used to be 40 plus and, uh, and now they seem to be average 29. What, what could explain that? It's a good question. Sorry, I don't wanna keep on cutting off uh, Cindy, Paul and Steve, uh, but at least on our end uh, with more of the kind of long-term stays, uh, we're seeing, you know, especially during COVID when cities are shut down and the cost of living in, you know, metros like New York and Los Angeles are, are very high, uh, you know, people are willing to travel and most people are working remote now. So, you know, they can uh, go to a different city or explore a new city. They might want to travel somewhere because they might want to move there and feel it out. So we're kind of seeing the, the flexibility in the younger demographic. Uh, in the older demographic, we're seeing, you know, parents and grandparents wanting to go you know, visit their kids or either their newborns for a few months or kind of help them uh, with that. So it, it shifts um, kind of accordingly where we see the biggest shift, I think, is kind of the, the younger the younger folks working in those larger metros looking to kind of uh, go to different markets, explore new cities while they're working remote uh, and they can afford to do so, especially when, you know, a lot of the larger metros are still shut down. So they can go, you know, new places where things are open and, and kind of, you know, get out and about um, where the older crowd isn't so much interested in that, uh, whether it's, you know, they're visiting family or family or whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's kind of at least what we're seeing. And I'm sure Paul and Cindy uh, might have some, some things to add. Yep, yep, I agree to you. Uh, uh, usually the younger demographic, or I don't want to say usually, but um, you know, they, they're fine with staying in hotel rooms, you know, they're, they're, they've, they're fine with uh, the, not the creature comforts that a vacation rental can offer. So this year that that shift has happened, um, both with uh, the, the, what the, what that guest wants, as well as um, the other reasons that would, that, that I said before with, um, with changes in, uh, and incomes and, and the way that uh, the way that they're traveling. So it, it is interesting. I think in the future, uh, we are going to see that that line flatten a bit, um, you know, because it did used to be a bell curve. We used to uh, when doing pay per click and, and Facebook campaigns. I mean, we used to target 35 to 45 was the primary peak um, and then 55 and to, to 65 was was right below that. Um, but this year it has kind of flattened out. You know, it, it, it is a bit more across the board. Um, still a lot of property managers don't rent to anybody under the age of 24. Uh, but yet the, um, the Equal Housing Act and everything with Facebook and Google and the way that the ads have to show 
uh, we now have issues with um, we have to open it up and and show the ads to everybody, uh, no matter what their age group is. So you know there there are hurdles uh, and there's ways of getting around that, but that's a whole other topic of conversation. Um, but uh, but yeah, that that shift is happening. But I think we are going to see a, a flatter ground in the future with the age groups. All right, thanks. I just noticed that I thought it was uh, one hour and we're actually 10 minutes over time. There's uh, a few questions that aren't answered yet, uh, but uh, unfortunately we, we have to cut off here. Um, now, uh, thank you everyone for, for joining. If, uh, if you have any answer, unanswered questions, you can always send them to, to Hostaway. I also recommend you reach out directly to Fine Rentals, ICND and, and Housestay. And if you happen to be a, a Hostaway customer, uh, then uh, please consider trying these services. They're great for bringing you, bringing you more bookings and, uh, and get a more diversified revenue stream. So uh, thank you everyone who joined us today and uh, have a great uh, rest of the day and rest of the week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Hostaway.